What's up, Navigators? I hope you guys are having a fantastic day so far. This is your buddy, Dr. Jay Phoenix, and coming at you to be able to respond to another one of your valued questions. If you guys have any questions for me that you would like me to answer down the line, please do let me know by simply placing them in the comments below. I always try to be able to get back to you guys personally in terms of responding to your comments. And if you have a question that's sufficiently high sensitivity, such that I think that all of the approximately 13, 14,000 subscribers that we currently have would be interested, I promise to be able to make you guys as a video as well. So today's question comes from Anastasia. So Anastasia, thank you so much for your question. And before I get to it, I want to give a huge, huge shout out to Devin Lafredo. Devin is our newest Patreon subscriber patron. Thank you so much for your guys' support. Thank you so much to Devin for her contribution to the community, which helps me to be able to continue making these videos for you guys. I really appreciate you, Devin. Thank you so much. So, okay, here's Anastasia's question. Anastasia says, could you please recommend how to approach a target supervisor for a postdoctoral fellowship? Uh, can you also share what are main things that supervisors are looking for for postdocs in, she says, behavioral psychology. I'll just talk about psychology in general in this video. And she says, thanks for the content. Thank you so much, Anastasia, for the kind words. Really appreciate it. So let's go ahead and jump right in, guys. Uh, we'll do the first question first. Second question, second. First question is, how do you approach a target supervisor for a postdoc? So my recommendation is that you honestly need to find out who your target postdoctoral supervisor is as early as possible in graduate school. Uh, for me, I did my first postdoc, uh, sorry, my first uh, doctorate at Oxford, second one at University of Constance. Uh, my doctorate in psychiatry was one where, to be honest with you, initially when I first got in, the individuals that I thought I most wanted to work with as postdoctoral fellows were completely different than who I ended up having as my dream supervisors down the line. And I was lucky enough to be able to get my first choice in terms of my dream postdoc, which at the time was the number one postdoc in forensic psychology in the United States. Now, this was obviously some time ago, but literally, I think like 10, 11, yeah, like 11 years ago. It's hard to believe. It feels like yesterday, right? Uh, but what happened for me was that it was in my second year, uh, and I had been reading the peer-reviewed research literature in my subfield of forensic psychology, which is called violence risk assessment, uh, like like a voracious animal. I was reading, I would say, maybe 12 to 14 papers a week, trying to get a sense of like the seminal literature uh, on that topic, who were kind of like the hot people in the field right now versus who were kind of like the OG people in the field. Because the, the funny thing is, is that this isn't always the case, but a lot of times the people who are... Uh, you know, possibly the biggest names in your field, they're the biggest names now because maybe 10 to 20 years ago, they did massively seminal work and they really built up their reputation. And oftentimes by the time they get to their 60s, 70s and above, they're kind of resting on their laurels at that stage and they're no longer rising stars and they're no longer these mid-career professionals. They're getting into that that late career status. Uh, I know so many wonderful individuals who are at that senior status now, top of their field, who do a tremendous amount of amazing research, but usually a lot of it is in a supervisory capacity or as a senior author on publications versus first author publications were something that they did more often earlier in their career and now as a tenured full professor, they're kind of just chilling and to be honest with you, they deserve it, so God bless. But it's one of these things that if you're applying for a postdoc with somebody just because they have a really big name, uh, so many times this can be a real disappointment. So many of you I've worked with who are postdoctoral fellows right now and you want to become tenure track faculty, uh, faculty members. And you've relayed this information to me that, you know, you thought this was like a legend in your field. You work with them and it's something where not only are you pulling all of the weight, but it's something where, you know, that, that seminal work that they did that inspired you to be able to apply to work with them was something that was done a while ago. And now either they've shifted their research focus or, you know, it's just one of these things where they don't have that fire that they used to. So my personal recommendation is if you want to work with a late career legend to be able to also have as a co-supervisor somebody who is kind of an early career rising star or a mid-career kind of tried and true individual in the field who's just very reliable, producing good work and getting grant funding on a consistent basis from reputable sources. So that's my recommendation there. In terms of how to be able to approach them, uh, my recommendation always, you have to come bearing gifts. My recommendation is to be able to uh, approach them at a conference. How do you find out what conference? Well, the easiest way to, is to be able to go to their CV, take a look at their workshops or conference presentation section, find out what conferences they go to. Everybody's got a pet conference. Go to that freaking conference, right? 
Uh, otherwise, if it's something where you're just like, ah, I can't find out what conferences they go to, pick whatever their national most prestigious conference is. Maybe they're in a different country than you. And take a look at whether or not they're going to be presenting. Because if they're going to be presenting as a first author on a paper, the likelihood is exceptionally high that they're going to be there, like 90% or higher, right? Unless they get sick, family emergency, whatever it happens to be. Uh, but my recommendation, 100%, is that you try to meet them in person and you can write them an email beforehand. I've helped people draft these emails so many times. So if you ever want to work one-on-one, -on -one, you can do that by booking a session down below. We can draft that email together to them. Uh, to be able to essentially introduce yourself, say you're going to go to the conference, you should also submit a paper or a poster or a symposium presentation uh, to them to be able to let, or not to them, to the conference to let them know that you've applied to be able to give a talk there as well. You would love to be able to meet them. At, at the very worst, you can say, uh, I'm you know, really looking forward to your session. I'll come up afterwards to introduce myself, right? You need to get on their radar as fast as possible. Uh, it should be something that if you're doing a postdoc, uh, unless it's an industry postdoc, it's going to be research based. You need to make sure that you've really established yourself, established yourself in literature by that point. Three to five publications, preferably as first author. It's one of these situations, depending on the nature of your doctoral program, you may have that or not. But the biggest thing is that if you if you're in a situation where anybody else can introduce you instead of you having to introduce yourself, right, then you should do that. Right, especially if your doctoral supervisor somehow has a strong relationship with that postdoc supervisor, that individual should introduce you. Okay, and we can go into that in another video in terms of how exactly to ask your supervisor to be able to do that for you and so forth. Uh, but that's how you approach them. Approach them via email, then go and see them in person, and then once every three months, okay, once a quarter, I want you to follow up with them via email and basically just keep them up to date on the biggest milestones that you're hitting. Keep it brief. Literally bullet that stuff out, hope that they're doing well, let them know if you're going to be at another conference that they're going to be at, stay on their radar. Uh, also, if, if you ever get the opportunity to do something like, and usually as a grad student, this isn't going to happen, that's why I don't mention this, right? But, uh, you know, co-guest edit a book or co-guest edit a, uh, an edit book or co-guest edit a, um, uh, pardon me, a special issue of a peer-reviewed journal, you should invite them to be able to submit a chapter manuscript, submit a manuscript for that special issue and so forth. At the very least, if your doctoral supervisor will allow it, if there is a manuscript that you think that they would be a good fit for in terms of the target postdoc supervisor to invite them on the paper, right, then that would also be a great move. If they say no, that they don't have the time, you can say, do you have a postdoc or a grad student in your lab who you'd be interested in having as a co-author on this paper? People are always looking for opportunities to be able to help out their own grad students or postdoctoral fellows, right? Uh, so that's what I would say there in terms of how to be able to approach target uh, supervisor for a postdoc. Uh, second question from Anastasia is, can you share what are the main things supervisors are looking for in candidates for postdocs in behavioral psychology? First thing, personal relationships. Do they know who the heck you are, right? Uh, if there's somebody who like, for example, GPA doesn't matter, I'm just telling you, right? Uh, if you've got like, let's just say, you know, 10 publications, and your GPA is like a B minus or C plus average or whatever by U.S. standards, uh, or you have somebody who's got straight A's and two publications, unless the, those are the two most legendary publications ever in like nature and science, the likelihood is I'm going to end up taking the person who's got loads more publications, okay? Especially if they're in good impact factor, mid-tier uh, or upper-tier journals. Mid-tier is fine, or even lower middle-tier is fine, okay? But that's kind of a big thing. Second thing is that if they have any kind of grant funding, and I'm talking about grant funding of like $2,000 or something, just showing evidence, right, that you're interested in that process. Apply for dissertation awards, apply for travel grants, apply for all of these different things, poster awards at uh, conferences. If you've got any kind of history of excellence that's been recognized outside of your university, that's great. Okay, conference presentations not at your university level, especially big name conferences, uh, that's a fantastic thing. Um, yeah, personal connections is like the name of the game, though. If you know somebody else and that person knows the postdoctoral supervisor, fantastic, right? So that's really what people are looking for uh, in terms of these applications. The big thing is that you never want to just apply for one of these things cold. Um, it takes a long time to be able to apply for these postdocs. Obviously, getting into a postdoc is more difficult most of the time than getting into grad school because obviously when it comes to grad school, even in something insanely competitive like clinical psych, it's still one of these things where getting a postdoc, there's fewer postdocs. 
right? And so because of that, it's going to be harder to be able to get them, right? Supply and demand, simple stuff. Uh, like I said, if you ever want to work one-on-one -on -one or whatever, get some guidance on it, hit me up below. Let's definitely talk about it. Appreciate you guys so much for watching this video. Huge shout out again to Devin, our newest patron. If you guys want to follow us on Patreon, it would be a pleasure to be able to have you. Thank you guys so much. Link for that is in the description below. God bless. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.